What are the differences between exposed fastener metal roofing and standing seam metal roofing? Watch today's Q&A Monday to find out which is best for your needs. I was moving during that. You want to reshoot it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals, and today we are comparing exposed fastener metal roofing to standing seam metal roofing. And by the way, there's navigation links in the description, so you can jump ahead to any of the questions we talk about today. And there's a full house. I got Julianne, Adam, and Jeff uh, back on the episode today, and we're going to be talking about, like I said, exposed fastener versus standing seam. So I want you guys to tell me first, what is exposed fastener metal roofing? Exposed fastener metal roof is, is exactly how it sounds. Um, they use an exposed fastener to attach the metal panel to the substrate. Uh, when compared to a standing seam roof, you have a concealed clip that holds the metal panel down. They're usually wider. Um, you don't usually want to use them on lower slopes. And, you know, they require a little bit more maintenance than your typical standing seam roof. And, and where to add on to that, where a standing seam roof uh, usually has a, a clip and interface, clip engagement, a exposed fastener roof, the engagement is a lap, usually some sealant in between the lap, and then using fasteners to attach it, just as Jeff said. So a lap is just where one panel uh, sits over another. Exactly. Okay, so what are some differences between exposed fastener and standing seam? So generally, not only is it thinner type metal more often than not, uh, but it also has a different paint system more often than not than your typical standing seam metal roof system. So standing seam is, is usually indicative of a uh, PVDF or a higher end architectural finish, where an exposed fastener is usually a polyester or a siliconized modified polyester SMP type finish which generally isn't as uh, long-lasting in terms of color characteristics as a PVDF. Uh, the only, only thing I'll add to that is uh, exposed fastener panels are usually quite a bit wider as well. They don't, they don't have the same seam configuration, so you can use the uh, same metal and get a wider panel out of it. You also go the length of the panel, where you know, I would say a non-fastener flange type panel system, non I guess, pinned panel in a standing seam application. Um, you can go, you know, hundreds of feet as far as your panel length, where an exposed fastener or a fastener flange, something, a panel that's pinned and doesn't have the ability to expand and contract, you're really limited to about 25 feet. Some people say up to 40 feet with exposed fasteners. But if you've got a roof run that is longer than that manufacturer's recommended length, you're going to have to lap the panels, and that's just another opportunity for water intrusion and things like that. So when installing exposed fastener and standing seam, what are the differences there? What kind of special considerations need to be uh, taken in order to uh, install either one of these type of panels? Well, as, as we talked about already, you know, you don't have a concealed clip, so you're using exposed fasteners. Uh, length is a concern depending on how long of a panel run you have, as we just got done talking about. For your flashings, you, you don't usually use metal closures. You use foam closures, um, and it takes the shape of whatever the corrugated or 5V or whatever type of exposed fastener roof looks like to close up the ends at the eave and at the ridge. So you have closures instead of metal, um, say, metal drip edge or metal ridge, uh, metal Z closures, things like that. Probably the most important thing when installing your exposed fastener metal roof is the fasteners. Um, when you install it, you use gasket head fasteners that have a neoprene gasket on top of the screw head. And that basically seals the hole up so water can't penetrate through the screw you basically just put through the metal panel. Uh, a lot can go wrong there. Um, screws can go in sideways. Uh, it could be driven and you crush the washer, basically, you know, not letting it do its job. And then even if it's put in perfectly over time, expansion and contraction will wiggle those screws out. So that's where the maintenance comes in is the roof will have to be checked. And eventually, more than likely, the screws will have to be replaced with a larger fastener into the same hole to uh, make sure your roof is secured to the death. Hmm. So does slope factor into those considerations as well as to what system you should use? Absolutely. Um, exposed fastener panels, again, since you have a bunch of holes through your roof and you're counting on that grommet or that washer of the fastener, 
you want to make sure you have a decent pitch on your roof when uh, you're using an exposed fastener system. So we typically recommended, you know, above a 312, you know, because that way there's no chance of water building back up on the roof and possibly penetrating the holes that, you know, the gaskets might not be completely sealed against. So it sounds like um, there's a decent amount of inspection that you'll have to perform eventually when it comes to exposed fastener. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just like anything else, you know, there's going to be some maintenance involved. Um, what you save on cost of your exposed fastener roof, you might have to pay for a little later on down the road as far as maintenance. Um, but there are some benefits to exposed fastener roof. And, you know, again, we talked about wider panel width. Wider panel widths go down faster, you know, period. Um, it's not as expensive to install because you don't have all the components that go into a standing seam roof. But um, there is some maintenance that's going to have to be done throughout its life. Yeah, one of the questions we had, we can jump ahead, is uh, what was the cost difference there? Let's talk a little bit more about that because you touched on it here. Um, but what, what are the cost differences mainly between exposed fastener and standing seam? It's kind of a, a wide-ranging uh, question because you have different types of uh, exposed fastener roofing systems. So really boils down to, you know, the paint finish um, and, and the thickness of the metal. From an installation standpoint, it's going to be uh, cheaper to install than a standing seam system. Um, then you look at the thickness of the metal. You know, if you're looking at uh, 24 gauge, um, you know, it, it's it's going to be, you know, 26 gauge versus 24 gauge is about 25% lighter. Mm -hmm. uh, you step that down to 29 gauge, uh, it's even dramatically lighter than that. So it, it's really... You know, when you look at the difference in the weight and the difference in the paint systems, that's really where the cost savings are in addition to the cost of the install. So, um, you know, it is dramatically cheaper, but, you know, it really varies really from where you are, you know, regionally in the country. But, but if you look at it, you know, it's a lot easier kind of alluding to what Jeff was saying. It's going to go down a lot faster with a wider panel width. You're not worrying about clips not worrying about, you know, the flashing zones as much because you've got a preformed, uh, you know, foam enclosure more often than not. I actually wanted to ask about the longevity. Is there a longevity difference? You know, how long it's going to stay on? As it relates to longevity, you know, it's typically the substrate's going to be a galvanized or a galvalume. And the MCA has, has showed that uh, galvalume is lasting up to, you know, 60 plus years in many applications. So you have that, but you also have the, the paint system that goes on the panel. So many exposed fastener systems are going to be your SMP or polyester, uh, which is not going to last nearly as long as your typical PVDF system. So, you know, it, it can have the longevity properly maintained, but also think about your environment, things like that. Um, you know, but it, it should have the long-term characteristics just as anything else as long as it's properly maintained. Yeah. So you mentioned steel. What materials can you use to a four exposed fastener versus standing seam? Well, you can use much of the same. Um, I'll let Jeff get into the nitty gritty, but traditionally exposed fastener roofs are made out of steel, be it galvanized or galvalum. You know, when you see other materials, be it zinc, copper, aluminum, it's usually a specialty piece, an accent piece, you know, but by and large, um, it's steel. You know, Jeff, I'm, I'm, you've seen a lot being down in Florida. I mean, you can give me some two cents on that too. Yeah, most of it's most of it's steel um, due to due to the strength of material, and you know the fact that you're you know it has raised ribs and you're usually screwing through those ribs, so you need a stronger material to be able to support that. Um, so sometimes you will see the thicker aluminum like O four O, but it's usually if it's just on a coast like a boathouse or somewhere in those in those uh, conditions. When it comes to, you know, copper and zinc, I think if you're using an exposed fastener system uh, with either of those materials, you're pretty much just throwing your money away because they're so soft and, um, you know, you can, get a, you can get a lot much, you can get a much better roof system using that material without an exposed fastener type panel. So when should someone choose an exposed fastener system? Um, I, I think somebody that really wants a metal roof, um, something, you know, somebody that's willing to, you know, maybe not spend as much up front or doesn't have the budget to spend a, that much up front, but wants that ribbed look that's pretty consistent with a uh, seamed metal roof. Um, 
you know, other things might be, you know, if it's a shed, if it's a barn, um, you know, that's where it's most prominent. You know, that's why it's called an ag panel in agricultural type applications. Um, but kind of keep in mind, uh, agricultural applications such as enclosed, uh, you know, animal enclosures and things like that, you got to be careful. Uh, there's a whole different, you know, set of rules for what metal you use, what substrate, uh, what warranties are available. Um, you know, the bottom line is if it's an enclosed animal enclosure, you do not want to use galvalum, even if it's painted and so on and so forth. And we get into that a little bit in our galvalum versus galvanized Q&A episode. Yeah. yeah the, the other thing I'll say with that, and we... We talked a little bit about it earlier with the installation. Um, you know, you want to make sure your contract is qualified no matter what roof system you're doing. But at the same time, with exposed fasteners, a lot of people, a lot of people tend to do it themselves. Um, you know, I mean, you can buy exposed fastener panels at Home Depot or Lowe's. So if you have a small project that you're working on, you know, say you're building a shed in the backyard, or even if you're, you know, got an easy roof and it doesn't have a lot of uh, transitions and it's not real cut up. Um, I know people that, you know, buy the metal and do it themselves because it doesn't, it's not as technical when it comes to the installation details portion of it as a standing seam roof is. That's where the foam closures and things like that come in. So when someone's looking for a metal roof, when is standing seam a good choice for them? Standing seam more often than not boils down to the, the aesthetic looks, uh, as well as the price. You know, when you're looking apples versus oranges, you know, a standing seam roof is going to be pretty substantially more expensive than an exposed fastener roof for, you know, the reasons we discussed. But it also comes down to look. I mean, do you want to see, you know, a roof with a bunch of fasteners? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a variety of different looks you can do in both that may have, you know, more appeal to, to one person than another. Yeah, no, one of the things you mentioned earlier as far as the paint systems, you know, if you have a 60-year roof, do you want a 20-year paint system or do you want a longer-lasting paint system? Um, if there's expansion and contraction concerns, you want someone that's able to move with the roof and not be pinned down. Warranty standpoints, um, you know, most manufacturers provide weather-type warranties for however many years. I don't know of any personally right now that provide a weather-type warranty on an exposed fastener system because it's hard to warranty something when you fake and you put a bunch of holes in it. Standing seam is always a good choice in my opinion and I think it would work good on any application where um, you know a metal roof is warranted. So the bottom line really is there's not per se a bad system. We don't want to beat up you know exposed fastener and say that standing seam is the best even though we do predominantly standing seam. There are higher end exposed fastener systems whether it's a uh, you know heavier gauge 24-22 uh, exposed fastener with a PVDF finish, you know, uh, seven ace corrugate or seven point two box strip. There's a number of systems out there that are used in higher end architectural roofs and walls. Um, but I think the the bottom line that we really want to convey is that you're not going to have the watertight integrity that your typical concealed fastener roof has. So um, that's that's one of the big reasons why we're in favor of standing seam. Right. And uh, if you want to learn more about standing seam metal roofing, we have a Q&A episode that we did. Uh, we go into detail about standing seam metal roofing specifically, so check that out. Uh, thanks, Jeff and Adam and Julianne for thanks, hopping guys. on the episode today. <laughs> I think we learned a lot, and be sure to subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel. Comment below to have your question answered on future Q&A Mondays. And anything else, visit Sheffield Metals online, and we'll catch you next time.